Hello and welcome to the tutorial for Earful Soup plugin. This is a plugin I have developed for calculating the solar irradiance of a 3D model in urban environments, and it is implemented as a plugin for Google SketchUp. In this tutorial, I will explain how to work with this plugin using a simple example. First, you have to download and install the plugin. See the download link in the comments for this video. This plugin is currently only supported for Windows platform, due to some differences between Windows and Mac OS X implementation. After you download the plugin, extract it to the plugins folder of your SketchUp installation. It is usually located under C, Program Files, Google, Google SketchUp 8, Plugins directory. Next, reopen SketchUp and you will see the small toolbar added to the menu. The software is using meteorological data to calculate the irradiance. So the first thing we have to do is to load the meteorological data of the region we want to work in. The plugin will remember your choice. We only have to do it once while testing in the same region. To load the meteorological data file, you need to select the meteorological icon from the IRSOF toolbar. This is one that looks like a small sun. If the toolbar is not displayed, use the menu from view toolbars and irradiance calculator to bring it up. The plugin can work with TMY or EPW files. EPW files are actually better because they are freely available for many regions around the world. Please see the comments for this video for locating an EPW file for your location. Click on browse button for direct irradiance file and look for the appropriate file to use. I will use the default file that is supplied with the plugin. I usually store the files under the MET directory, which is under the plugin IRFORSU directory. This plugin only works for direct irradiance, so I will ignore the diffuse irradiance menu for now. So I selected the file, and now I'll just run apply and click this, the save setting checkbox. Now you can close the window. Next, let's open a 3D model. For this example, I'm using a simulation of a city. Please remember that the geolocation of the 3D model should be the same as the EPW file data, so we'll get correct result. To verify the model's location, go to Window Model Info, then click Geolocation. To see the location, add the location yourself or just Click the set manual location and you see the current location. If you decide to make any changes to the location, make sure that you save it, your change later. So it will share, save it with the model. In this city model, I'm interested in calculating the solar irradiance of a building here. I've isolated the roof of this building in a separate layer and I want to calculate the solar irradiance for it. The north direction is marked with a yellow line over here. First, I will select all the faces of the rooftop of this building. For convenience, I'll just remove the city and building layers, mark all the faces like this, and bring them back. Now, my calculation will consider the effects of the mutual building surrounding this building. Here, I have already made a grid on the roof to increase the calculation resolution. The more faces you have, the longer the calculation will take. So just use the lowest resolution that you need. One square meter, 10 square meter, etc. To learn how to divide the face into a grid of faces, check out my other videos. Now, let's open the radius calculator window by clicking on the calculator button on the plugin toolbar. We have a few options here for the time frame. We can use the full year, which means a full calculation, or a quick year, or different segments of the year, different months, etc. The quick year, which is the default one, will run a quick simulation of an entire year. The difference of accuracy between a full year and a quick year is about 3%, so I will use the quick year for now. Before running the simulation, I will need to reset any previous stats of the model faces, if any, 
So I'm clicking reset button to reset all the values of selected faces. You can see that they are all changed into white. And now let's press calculate. You can notice the progress bar at the bottom. The calculation can take some time depending on the available CPU, the number of selected faces, and then the time frame itself. Once the calculation is finished, the solar irradiance is displayed on, a, on selected faces in color scale. To better understand the result, I will open the legend window by clicking on the rainbow colored icon of the toolbar. Here. You can see that the faces that accumulated little irradiance appear in blue and green colors, while the faces that accumulated more irradiance appear in red and in orange colors. The legend has a few parts. The first part here you can see you can change the unit. You just change the unit and click apply. We also have the sun hours, which indicates how many direct sun hours were on the model and so on. You can also check uh, the calculation values here. There are the max value or minimum value, average value, etc. For now I'm going back to default accumulated value and watt hour per square meter. All the values are stored with the 3D model itself. So you don't need to run the simulation every time you load the model, unless you change anything in the model. We can see that the shaded faces that are closer to the adjacent building accumulate with less irradiance. This helped me to understand where there is the best place to deploy my solar panel. To check the irradiance for a specific face, I'm selecting that face and clicking face irradiance value button here. If you have the Ruby console open, you will have the face information presented here. If the Ruby console is not open, you can open it by clicking window Ruby console. And you can see that if I'm clicking a face and then I'm clicking face irradiance value, I will see the irradiance statistics for that specific face. All the values are available here, including the orientation, tilt, and so on. I can also use this filter here for planning. For example, let's assume that I need at least 1 million watt hour per square meter annual irradiance for my solar collectors, or some other value that is needed for the summer or winter time frame. As the calculation here was for an entire year, so I can set a minimum irradiance value of a million watt hour per square meter and click apply. Before that, let me just mark the parts that I want to and now I can click apply. And I can see that the values that are below 1 million are colored in red. I can do the same with the maximum value. Let's say I have 1 million 100,000. To apply, I can see wh which are the areas that are more than the selected value or less than the selected value. I can continue and test until I reach the setting that I want. The information hasn't changed, as you can see in the Ruby console here. It's only the representation of the selected face that has changed. This is the first step in the simulation. I can now decide to change the model, push or pull any parts, modify it as I wish, and rerun the simulation or another design option to see which is better. A few notes. To keep the calculation short, try to keep the model as simple as possible at least at the early design phase. SketchUp is using only one thread for the Ruby API, so it kind of gets stuck while the plugin is running. 
This is a normal behavior. For more information, please see my other videos and the links in the video comments below. For any questions, please contact me through the comments or to email. Thank you for watching and happy modeling.